Hey guys, welcome back to Uncut Hawaii presented by Central Pacific Bank. I'm Andrew. And I'm Kobe, and this is the podcast where we interview Hawaii's most interesting and innovative entrepreneurs, creators, and change makers. And today we have all our guest has all three of those things. Yeah, she's an all-star. Yeah, she, literally all-star, uh-huh. Olympic all-star. Yeah, yeah. Kamalani Dam. She is Hawaii's first professional softball player. Crazy. Yeah. And like, she's, it's so cool to hear her journey because it's like she started, she's from Waina, she's from Hawaii, mm-hmm. made it to the national level, mm-hmm. took it to the next level, made it to the international level. Yeah. And then at the Olympics, and it was a lot of things during this conversation that was we so got to great. Talk about her really inspirational journey. But then I think I said this in the episode too that she's such like a small town girl. And she always says, like, goes back to her humble beginnings, mm-hmm. small town girl. And she still has that same like perspective on life and Mm -hmm. just super inspirational yep we talk about one of the theories that like she like lives by and it's like so cool yeah and then a little surprise at the end of the episode so stay tuned for that enjoy this episode kama thank you for being on uncut welcome thank you for having me i'm super stoked to be here so excited we're gonna start off with rapid fire questions just All right. To get us in, Since you have the Starbucks on the table, yeah. what's your go-to Starbucks order? Go-to Starbucks order is a matcha green tea, and then obviously you have to go in with the oat milk because normal milk is like not trending right now. <laughs> <laughs> but then you top it off with vanilla foam, which is definitely normal milk. So it yeah, makes yeah. it makes Can't no sense. At evens all. it out. Yeah. Evens it out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Love it. It's really good actually. Because then mm. you texted me your order, and then I was like, I want to try this too, and. It's, so awesome. good. Right? It's like the perfect amount of like sweet, yeah, and creamy. Yeah. No, and I'm a big caffeine girl. I'm the type of person that will definitely start tweaking out if yeah. I have too much coffee. So mm-hmm. this is so a nice is like, like a good level. Yeah. Afternoon drink. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Go to eating out place. Eating out. Mm-hmm. Like super nice or like normal Anything. or just first like one a, that comes to yeah. mind. Dang it. Okay, well, Zippy's is <laughs> yes, classic. Like a classic go-to. Like, I find myself there way too often. What's your go-to <laughs> order? My go-to order is the Korean garlic chicken. Yum. Yep. And yep. I get that with the chili. Yes. Ooh, yeah. But on the chili, you have to put Fish. onions and, and cheese. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, you know. You know. Oh, yeah. you know. That's my if order you, right If there. you know, you know. Yeah, if you know, <laughs> you, you, know. Know, you know. That's the order. <laughs> your favorite childhood movie. Oh, this is a one that I always get, and I always go with the same thing: white chicks. Oh, white chicks. That's a good one. That's a good one. Hey, it's a it's a classic. It's, it classic. is a classic. It was definitely one of those. Like, I don't know if anyone else in Hawaii experienced this, but going to the parking lot and then you meet up with the guy. I'm from Waianae, so you like meet, you meet up with the guy, and he has like his folder of like DVDs, DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> and and you pick like a certain amount of DVDs and. That's all you watch throughout your whole childhood is like the same 10 movies yes, over and over again. Yeah. And like at the funny parts, like the people in the theater are laughing because they got like the, it's the recording. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. like people's heads are like bobbing in yeah. between it. And you're just like, oh. oh, so you got that version of that, white chicks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know like what part of life you had to be a part of to experience that. But it was, that you was missed like, out yeah. if you weren't yeah. a part of the. That, that was like before and then internet, like Napster like, and like recording or even. Even before then, like recording to cassette, you guys might be too young. For that. <laughs> oh, that's, push, that's pushing it, Kobe. That's pushing, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what the cassette. Like, five five dollar white DVD. slip DVDs. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you slip. know, you know. Again, yeah, yeah, yeah. You buy more, you save more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Who is your um, childhood crush? Childhood celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. I don't even know if I had one, to be honest. Okay, but what about right now, then? <laughs> right. Oh, I'm going to go with, like, a classic, you know, keep it classy. Maybe, like, a... I'm not going to say anyone from Hawaii, because that hits too close to home. We might, yeah, it's all my It's going to cause a problem. Even though we yeah, do yeah, talk yeah, yeah. about Jason Momoa a lot on this podcast. <laughs> I will not confirm or deny if he was in the running for someone I was going to say, but let's just go with, like, Taylor Lautner when I was a kid. Oh, Who did okay. it, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm going to play it safe here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, best place you've traveled to? Best place I've traveled to is Japan by mm. far. Mm-hmm. So through sports, I've traveled through a bunch of different countries, but mm. Japan, nicest people, best yeah. food, 
you feel mm-hmm. like you're kind of in like a movie or something. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so clean, so yeah. organized. Yeah. Nice. That's a good what's choice. Your, um, mm-hmm. What's your go to like when you go to Japan? What's the thing that you like eat first when you first get off the plane? Definitely any type of sushi. Yeah. It just mm-hmm. feels like so good. And when I lived up in Japan for like the month and a half that I was there, I would eat so much and I wouldn't gain any weight at all. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like a lot of walking too, yeah. Yeah, a lot of walking and just, I guess, the, the food the is quality, real. The everything is yeah. real. Yeah, yeah. Real. The food is real. <laughs> the food is real. Mm-hmm. If you know, you know. <laughs> yeah. So many inside yeah. jokes yeah. to start yeah. off yeah, this podcast. If you know, you know. And if anybody is hanging with us and knows everything, like, wow, you are just... <laughs> Keep a listening. real one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's meant for you. One. It's yes. meant for you. What's one of your guilty pleasures? Guilty pleasures is eating a whole bunch of candy and chocolate. Mm. Chocolate? I'm a big candy gal. Sweets. What kind of candy? Obviously, Favorite. we're going with some noms. Yep. Yeah. Hawaii <laughs> candy <laughs> yeah, yeah, Noms. Yeah. Wait, they don't have chocolate. Do I they? mean, I will. I mean. We're, it's going to happen. No. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just chocolate and lihimoi noms. Yeah. Anything. Yep, yep, yes. <laughs> nice. Oh, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you for answering that. <laughs> Okay, now we're all warmed up. We're all warmed up. <laughs> We've been warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> always ready. Yeah, I always know, now ready. I just want some noms. Like, can we, we get sponsored by noms? <laughs> that would be a great We can sponsor. talk about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's figure it out. No, no, no. Stay um, tuned for some surprises throughout <laughs> this podcast. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, thank you for coming on. Like, mm-hmm. I, you... You know, just like through social media, like we've seen you, you've been a part of so many different things. And yeah. we just kind of want to talk about like where you're from. Like you talked about being from Wai'anae. So like tell us about that growing up. And um, I'd say that my childhood was like a mixture of farm life. I mean, super country, pigs, chickens. Love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people wouldn't know that I my foundation is built on kind of like that farm life, mm. that farm lifestyle, small town, super humble beginnings. So having to go out like first thing in the morning and feed animals. I mean, yes, against my will on some <laughs> days, you know, like who's trying to do that? And I also I went to Kamehameha. I was mm-hmm. a lifer. Mm-hmm. So waking up at 430 to catch the bus and then you sit into like an hour to two hours of traffic just to go there. And you're a little kindergartner yeah. all the way up through school. So wow. a super interesting upbringing of extreme discipline and just humble beginnings where I mean, some days we, my mom was a realtor when I was growing up and my dad was a farmer. So there were some days where we had a lot, a lot of money Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, we were considered like one of the party houses. I mean, my parents were the coaches and the community would come rally around my house and we had a racetrack and all the machines and the massive property. We, we had bikes. Yeah, so we had go go karts, quads, golf carts. Oh my gosh, nice. how fun! <laughs> yeah, and it was just totally unregulated since it was our yard yep. and like all yep. my cousins and friends. So we're just like crashing and flipping yeah, into yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> and so like, much fun. No, it definitely so toughens much, you up. Yeah, so much fun. And then on the other hand, there was days where maybe we hit some hard times. Definitely leaning into um, more of like the why not, you know, just like the the hard times of. Maybe having to skip meals or just a lot of things that I didn't realize as a kid. Mm -hmm. Um, But more so now that I'm growing into it, like a young adult, an adult is seeing that my parents were going through a lot to make sure that I had food on the table, Mm -hmm. to make sure that I had a good upbringing and make sure that I didn't really skip a beat in Mm -hmm. anything that I was up to at the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like the sacrifices that they made and like what it takes to raise a kid in Hawaii. Yeah, and it's crazy. Like, as you get older, you you start to realize, looking back, things that may not have seemed so bad. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I didn't find it weird that I slept on the floor or did this or whatever moments. But Mm -hmm. now you're looking back and it's like, oh, what a hard time that actually kind of was, you know? Mm -hmm. So many of us go through that. And so many families go through that. You know, it's like, it's hard to make it in Hawaii. But yeah, yeah, the fact that they're still, like, sending you to Kamehameha and... I'm guessing, like, getting you into softball, baseball, softball. Yeah, so I started off actually in baseball. Mm -hmm. My parents were, like, as I said, super fun. People knew everybody in Waianae. So I ended up actually starting off in t-ball, and I was on the best boys, like, t-ball team. Nice. So it was all the best boys and, Uh like, parents. And comma. In Waianae, and then, like, me for no reason. (laughs) Like, it was, like, me and my other friend, this other girl that was on the team, and... 
I was only on the team because my parents were friends with everyone. Like mm-hmm. I did not belong on the team at all. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chasing butterflies and just doing like running the wrong way, and everyone's like, "Gosh, this kid just sucks." Like, <laughs> What's she I doing mean, on the team? team all, that's yeah, like yeah. how old are you? Like five? Yeah, but like okay, these other boys are like throwing people out, and yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. why are you so good at five years old? And I'm over here just like absolutely the worst. <laughs> So I, it got to the point where I was like pretty tired of getting like uh, like lapped multiple times while running bases with the kids, yeah, like yeah. the other boys. So I was starting to have doubts about T-ball. <laughs> just like, At five. Five years yeah, yeah, yeah. questioning. Yeah, questioning yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do I do this? <laughs> and then, so my parents um, put me over into softball and it was a right fit right out the gate. Um, one day they asked if anybody wanted to try and pitch. And knowing my background, everyone was like, ooh, like, we know he saw you playing on T-ball. Like, I don't know about all that. Yeah. Like, maybe we'll pick her last. Yeah, so they yeah, tried yeah, everyone yeah. else on uh-huh. the team first, obviously. And then finally, I got my chance to pitch. And I struck out the first three batters that came up. And everyone was nice. like, wow, oh, okay. that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then from there, it was pretty much me just getting inspired and, like, watching the older girls play. And then my parents started to notice that I was really good. So Mm -hmm. they kind of started to push me more and, like, maybe you should try this. Go practice. Like, try harder. So nice. that was kind of the start of everything. That's So how old were you when you started softball? I was probably around, like, six. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah, you're playing your your whole life. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, playing forever. was softball... Like, you hear in Hawaii, like, baseball is such a huge thing. Like, kids on the Big Island especially, but everywhere here, too. Um, like, all the kids play baseball. But was softball big in Waianae, too? I'd say that it was probably normal for, like, Just youth. Just, like, another youth, youth sport. Another yeah. youth sport, but mm-hmm. never something where you aspired to, like, go and play. Like, nowadays, where... People are like, oh, I would love to pitch like Kamo or go play football like Marcus. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't like as a young kid, there was definitely not the I want to play like model. this person. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was more so just for fun yeah. and you yeah. play and it ends one day. Like it's, one of the sports you play growing up. Yeah, yeah. totally. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So it was really just out of the love of the game. And I just thought it was really fun. And like I said, growing up from humble beginnings, I think it was a crazy outlet for me and my family to be able to have a community and something to just look forward to every day. That's so cool. Okay, so you grew up playing softball Mm -hmm. and then continued to play through till high school. Yep, so I started playing sports when I was, like I said, six, moved into continuing to play. And it, it was really quick where I started to realize that I was pretty decent at softball. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, as a 10 and under, I was always playing up on the 14s. Or wow. Yeah. I'm pretty sure as a 12 and under team or maybe even 10, I'm not too sure. We, like, won the 18 and under division. Nice. Wow. So, it, was, it, was, it started really early for us where we were having undefeated seasons and people were starting to notice, like, mm-hmm. our teams were really good. And as we got better, a lot of the other teams around us got better. So mm-hmm. I feel like during our, our era of softball, it was really competitive. Yeah, kind mm-hmm. of just like brought up the whole league. Yeah, nice. so so it was it was starting to really pop off for me. And it was never something where I thought it would lead to anything. Mm-hmm. And coming from such like a small town mentality, mm-hmm. um, it was never an idea like to go to college. Mm-hmm. or and, You know, these were just not really thoughts that I had. It was mm-hmm. kind of like whatever happens, happens. You yeah. just mm-hmm. let life happen, you know? Yeah. yeah. But then, but then people started to see me, and it all started actually when a mainland team came down to Hawaii, and they were playing all of us, and the coach recruited me, and he was like, hey, I think you could come oh, up nice. to my team and, and play. And my parents were like, no, like, we yeah, do yeah, not have yeah. the funding for that. Like, mm-hmm. we're good. Mm-hmm. There's no About reason. How old were you? This was in high school age or before that? Definitely before that. So probably middle school sometime, oh, nice. like right before heading into high school. Mm-hmm was my first shot of like somebody seeing me acknowledging Mm -hmm. that I was really good and then asking me to come up to the mainland and play with them and my parents were like no like we don't have the funds for that and they were like we think that she's so good that we want to just bring her up for free that's crazy yeah Yeah, so they oh my gosh so they totally had my back in terms of like any of the team fees were covered 
Wow. Um, like housing, they said that I could live with them. And wow. it was kind of just like whatever we could provide mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. would be up to us. But for the most part, it was, they took a Taking major, yeah. yeah, like chance So on where me. was this? Where, where did you end up going? So I ended up going up and I, I lived in California uh-huh. through, throughout the summer. And nice. my, my dad ended up actually flying up with me that year. Okay. So, um, yeah, I just played on a bunch of different, uh, different travel ball teams and different tournaments. And that's where I started to get noticed by college coaches mm-hmm. and leaving Before Hawaii. Before even going into high school. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So leaving Hawaii, it was like, that's when I realized that there was like this whole world of sports out there that mm. I never got introduced to back home where mm-hmm. everything they did was like for college. They wanted to mm-hmm. go pro. Yeah, they wanted yeah. to like they're just built different out there, you know? (laughs) So while we were all playing for fun and for the love (laughs) of the game and for like bragging rights at the park, these kids are like doing intense trainings that are like $200 a session and just going to traveling the world to all these different tournaments to try and get like their dream school to offer them a scholarship. And I was like, holy smokes. It's like a whole yeah. other level now. Yeah. yeah so it, it leveled me up immediately. So mm-hmm. when I came back, I was just definitely a different ball player. And a bunch of my friends followed me up there. Um, some of the softball players that are definitely known now from Hawaii as well. We all kind of like went up as a bunch. So they recruited me. And then I had like kind of this group of girls that were like, what oh, that's nice. And I, yeah. I was like, yeah, let's all go. Oh, so then sick. we all went up and nice. we all got better. And it was the start of something really cool. And now it's kind of like, mm, it's kind of like the path right now for softball players. You go mm-hmm. up, you train in the summers, you come back home to Hawaii, you get your scholarship offers, and it's just kind of like what we laid. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of kinda like, like the, the roadmap. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's like the roadmap right now that everyone follows. That's, that's so it. crazy. Yeah. That like give me chicken skin. We just said that because it's like you were part of like changing potentially like so many lives. Like just because we never. And we talked about this uh, with Steve Wehar. We were talking about, like, sports in Hawaii. And we're like, man, the way that Hawaii rallies behind our athletes is, like, on another level because it's, like, so much harder for the kids Mm -hmm. to, like, be successful from here. Yeah, and I think that as a person in Hawaii, we all can relate. Like, a lot of us have played sports growing up. Yeah. And maybe not have given the same opportunities as the people who have been able to make it. So Mm -hmm. I think as some people of Hawaii, I think we all can appreciate someone who's defied odds and made it because I think that person represents all of us if we got our shot, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's exactly it. And it's, yeah, we were talking about like, it's like the underdog mentality because like we're an island out here, you know? And it's like, they have all the resources out there. Mm -hmm. You had to fly up there, you know? They could have just drove or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I love that you took a team with, like your tribe with with you. you. It wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm going to go and like become really great. It's like, we're all going to (laughs) go. Yeah, it's been crazy. Actually, you're the first person to ever point that out. But I feel like kind of along my journey, a lot of people will tell me like, I mean, you're not 100% set up yet. Why are you helping people? Like, Mm -hmm. I came back home from playing pro and I started giving back to the community, this and that. And everyone's like, hey, like, make sure you're good first before Mm -hmm. you start giving back. But, Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it stems all the way back to baby days where it's like, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's room for everyone. And Mm -hmm. if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it with friends. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, might as well bring out everyone. Yeah. Yeah. We all rise. Like, exactly. We all, we all win. Yeah. Totally. Community over competition. Yeah. Is what we always talk about. Yeah. Community over competition. I love that. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of like where it all began for me, and it, mm-hmm. it did you definitely do that like changed. every summer after that, or um yeah. So I did it for two summers straight, uh-huh. and being a late recruit, so uh, people in the mainland back in the day were getting recruited as seventh graders, that's sixth crazy. graders. Holy that's crazy. Holy smokes. Yeah. yeah. Committing to college. So even like you saying that, that was late, late for you. Late recruit, yeah. even before high school. Yeah. yeah. That's so insane. Yeah, so me wow. as a freshman going into sophomore year was already considered like... Late. Late. Yeah. So nowadays they have rules that kind of restrict you from doing all of that early oh, yeah. recruiting, but back in my day, that was late. Yeah, and yeah. when I went up there my second time, I didn't even know I was late, but I kind of just wanted to go somewhere where I felt like it was a right fit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So somewhere that I felt like I would be taken care of, somewhere that was 
a right fit. I mean, I needed money to go to school, yeah. so I needed somewhere with money. And mm -hmm. as a late recruit, that kind of limits your options. Mm -hmm. So I did have really big schools on my radar. I had a lot of people giving me cards mm -hmm. when I was at these tournaments. And coming from Hawaii, nobody ever told me that you call the number on the card. <laughs> so I'm over here like stacking my Pokemon yeah, card yeah, yeah, collection, yeah, yeah. basically, like, oh, cool, of like yeah. college coaches oh. and like oh have gosh. no idea that I was supposed to call all oh. of them. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Me and my parents are like, oh, wow, this is great. Maybe they'll give us a call. Like, How are they going to get yeah, our yeah, number, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So... <laughs> Oh, so, that's so sweet, yeah, though. so it ended up just working out. I ended up committing to Fresno State my sophomore year on a full ride. Wow. And it was one of those things where I feel like throughout a lot of our lives, we can tell when something's a right fit for us. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty obvious mm -hmm. um, where like I was driving and I was wondering, like, oh, I wonder what school I should go to. And then I saw like the street name was Ford and that was the coach's name. And oh, I was okay. like, that's oh. interesting. Uh -huh. And then like we went to Subway because we would eat Subway for no reason, like for every meal. Yeah, I remember those yeah. days. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like when you're traveling and like for some yeah. reason Subway was just the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we're over there and then there was like, I don't know what happened, but there was like some sort of confrontation with someone like outside of the store who uh -huh. may have been like a crackhead or something. I'm not too <laughs> sure. <laughs> and then my mom and them were fighting and then like out of nowhere, like the, someone steps out of a car and is like our hero, like, hey, get away from them. Yeah, and yeah, I was like the coach that was trying to recruit what? me, like the assistant coach. Are you coach. serious? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, so it's just like little signs, signs yeah, from little the signs. universe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it was little signs like, wow, you just saved us from like this crackhead. And <laughs> like, at Subway. Yeah, at Subway. And then there's like this sign and it has like the other coach's yeah, yeah, name yeah. on it, like on the same street. And I mean... If that's not a no-brainer yeah. for you, then, I mean, I don't know what else it would be, you know? <laughs> like, so, it's crazy because, like, like you said, like, you know, growing up, you were just kind of playing because for the love of the sport. And then suddenly, you, you got thrown into this whole other world. And it's like, all right, now I have a purpose. And so, going into your sophomore year, you committed to Fresno State. So, how was it like? I didn't even realize that that was a thing. That's so crazy, yeah. That that's you're committed at sophomore year. So, yeah. how was it like playing the rest of your high school mm -hmm. career with that? Was there pressure or was it like... Did it motivate you or like, you know, like how did you take that then, on? Yeah. yeah. Um, at, at that time, I think that it was mostly, I think my sophomore year, I, I actually just talked to Howard Dash recently mm -hmm. and they called my first game yeah. um, where I was like featured as like MVP at States and everything. And it was nice. my sophomore year. So it was coming right off of me committing and everything. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think it was pretty much just motivation to yeah. just keep working hard and I knew that I had achieved the goal that I was pursuing really hard. Like the goal was college, 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 yeah. like mm -hmm. college for free, college for free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do it, yeah. do it. Like, and you get to was, play the sport that you love. Yeah. So, I mean, it was more so playing the sport mm -hmm. for free up in the mainland and getting like this life experience more than actually going to school at the mm -hmm. time. Because yeah. like I said, coming from such a small town mentality, it's kind of just like you don't think about the bigger picture that mm -hmm. much so it's just like whatever's in front of you you're just playing for the love of the game doing whatever's in front of you because that's kind of the path that you're already on and so, like you yeah. said you didn't have somebody like a role model that had gone through that like played softball and like had gone through the ranks like yeah. that so you're like kind of just going trailblazing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i was kind of just like going and doing yeah. it really because it was presenting itself and it mm -hmm. just felt correct for my for my life yeah. so i ended up playing and I it just it was a motivator because they can take your scholarship away yep. mm -hmm. so just because you're committed doesn't yeah. mean that you're, you're signed on or anything so it was you just have to keep working really hard mm -hmm. because you have to prove to the school that you're still good enough to get that scholarship <laughs> yeah. when you graduate or when, whole, until like you sign for two more years yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. two more seasons yeah, yeah. pretty much so yeah. I mean it's rare for them to take it back but I've seen it mm -hmm. so yeah. it definitely happens mm -hmm. that's crazy wow. So you play for Kamehameha, graduate, and then go to Fresno? Mm -hmm. What was that experience like playing college softball? It was crazy. So I picked Fresno as a sports school. Mm -hmm. It has the one of the best stadiums at the time in all of the nation for wow. softball. They were um, NCAA champions and one of the only schools to just have like such a crazy fan base at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fresno was definitely up there as like a top dog mm -hmm. uh, in their tradition and culture and 
going to Fresno was probably one of the best decisions I've ever made sports nice. wise because I mean that community rallies around that school like mm -hmm. nobody's business yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so I would be walking around and I mean just in the stores and they would recognize me yeah, and sick. just give me a shout out like hey pitch good tonight yeah. like, oh, it was just like, like a crazy yeah. that's awesome crazy experience and it was I was definitely homesick when I mm -hmm. first moved because mm -hmm. it was a culture shock but yeah. mm -hmm. it made me feel really at home that everybody there was just so supportive mm -hmm. so like awesome around the community and rallied around it's almost like hawaii you know like yeah it's supportive here and then you, you just move to college out there but we had another supportive fan base so that was awesome yeah, yeah. but i'm sure it's also because you're course, like yeah. a this, fan yeah, favorite yeah. and like beautiful and just good person because they probably wouldn't root for just like anybody <laughs> I mean, I'm thankful regardless of what it was, but I mean, they were they were awesome. So That's I will cool. always have mad love for like Fresno State and that that experience of my college career. Was yeah. there a, was there a time in your career or like a point in your career where like you kind of like questioned, you know, what you were doing? Like, oh man, why am I doing this? Or like had so, any self doubts or anything? Yeah, actually leaving. Fresno State was probably the biggest decision I had made in my mm -hmm. life up until that point. Mm -hmm. What uh, kind of led up to there? Oh, led up to that. Yeah. So my coach ended up leaving oh, my right. sophomore year. And it was just a really good time for me to realign mm -hmm. because I chose Fresno State for the sports yep. and stuff. And then it started to feel like I kind of wanted to try to choose somewhere for, for other reasons mm -hmm. other than just sports. Mm -hmm. And with my coach leaving, it was just like a whole whirlwind of emotions. But yeah, up until that point, I had really just l done everything that was put in front of me mm -hmm. and kind of just followed the path that was starting to pave itself yep. in front of me. Playing sports, college, 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 mm -hmm. take whatever college fits. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm pursuing this thing. And it was the first like conscious decision I actually think uh -huh. I made on my own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Up it's into, like very adult you're decision. not a kid anymore. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. My whole life, I just kind of did whatever everyone told me to do and whatever was like obviously the next move. And mm -hmm. then that was the first time where I had to decide if I wanted to stay at Fresno State, which was a school that took a chance on a random Hawaii kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like everyone knew Hawaii pitchers were not it. Mm -hmm. so they t totally took a chance on me loved me unconditionally so it was like so hard for me to decide yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, I was like crying and I couldn't like I was like in bed for like yeah. a whole week <laughs> and then finally I ended up deciding to to leave and this was before the transfer portal which now yep. college athletes if they want to transfer they can just put their name in the portal and everyone yep. will see it and then they'll just contact you and mm. it's pretty simple it's crazy. Yeah. yeah easy process yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah back then it was the year before that happened so that's always nice <laughs> um I had to get approval from my coach to leave oh, dang. you have to ask your yeah, school yeah, and yeah. your coach oh, to awkward. leave yeah, that's yeah, awkward conversation, conversation. Yeah. So, it's like a breakup uh, yeah, yeah. a major breakup and like i'm pretty sure like the week before that i was like oh no like i love fresno with all my heart and then like i just leave. had like yeah <laughs> it was like really crazy <laughs> and then um it was hard because they were trying to block me and they were like you're our ace pitcher like we were relying on you and mm -hmm. like you can't leave so there was like a whole drama i'm pretty mm -hmm. sure i had like a three-hour meeting just like going back and forth and like you can't leave and like all these little kids are wearing your jersey number you're gonna like let down the whole community oh dang, dang like, they go that oh. far <laughs> that's a tough one yeah mm -hmm. and then i was just like so distraught but then i ended up leaving anyway mm -hmm. and choosing a school was the next thing that had me in bed crying for the next week yeah. <laughs> because after that i mean it was pretty much like open game mm -hmm. so that year i had won mountain west pitcher of the year mm -hmm. of the whole conference and was leading the nation in almost every major pitching category so leaving the school was pretty simple like yep. In Everybody terms, kind of has their eyes would, on you already. Yeah. yeah. In yeah. terms of if you had enough money to pay me a full ride, I had basically an offer there. Nice. So it was crazy coming like from such a small town, humble beginnings, yeah. not knowing who to call. Yeah. And then now my sophomore year of college, deciding to leave and pretty much being able to go to any school All in the, the nation. All the doors are open. That's crazy. It yeah. was yeah. overwhelming for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So I went on a few visits to some huge programs. 
and they they gave me the works. Like mm-hmm. they take you onto the campus and they're oh, yeah, trying to sure. try to butter you up. Oh, yeah. 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 butter. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the side of like sports that like people don't know about. They try to sell you. Oh, yeah. 100%. They try to recruit you hard. Yeah. So I got there and then they're giving me like the wine and dine. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they yeah, got the you experience. in the nicest hotel rooms they have and the, they're like if you come here, you'll get like three meals a day. And one of them is at this restaurant (laughs) that's in our athletic facility. And like, they put me in a room, one of those schools and they like, all the lights like went off and I'm sitting in this room. I'm like, where am I? (laughs) And then all of a sudden it's like, and like all the lights come on and it's like this 360 movie room of like, just showing me like a hype video of like the athletics and it's like lights blaring and like the person's like running around the room. So I'm like, whoa, whoa. And and I'm just like overwhelmed and overstimulated. And it was like super cool. Like to be honest, if I didn't, decide kind of late that I wanted to leave I would have I would kill to go back and just travel to all the different mm-hmm. schools just and play just play that card yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just have all the red carpets yeah, yeah. rolled out <laughs> yeah like wow some of these schools just have like the um, craziest things available for athletes and oh, they're yeah. just showing us like here's our state-of-the-art huge weight rooms and mm-hmm. here's all the tutors that we have to support you and like it's just like this that yeah, boom flashing lights yeah, yeah. like <laughs> It was, it's crazy. And I'm, I'm so just like, as someone who never thought that that Mm -hmm. was even a goal of mine, Mm -hmm. I was just overwhelmed. I was like, what is happening? (laughs) So what, what stood out for you at Cal? Mm -hmm. So for me, I decided that I wanted to kind of broaden my spectrum of, um, sports and academics. So I really was like, Hey, I picked somewhere for sports. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Mm -hmm. And you did it. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of like almost a check off my bucket list of like, now I know exactly what that feels like. I would understand Mm -hmm. that anywhere else. And I was like, you know, Cal is probably one of like the best educations in the world. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity that I never would have had coming out of high school Mm -hmm. um, originally. And then I I was just like, I I would be able to play in one of the best leagues, Mm -hmm. which is the Pac-12. Yeah. So maybe I wouldn't be going in on one of the higher teams, like the champions that were recruiting me. Mm -hmm. But I was like, but this side, I get the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. I was like, I may not be on the championship team, but I get to play the championship players Mm -hmm. and I get an education that they'll never have any Mm -hmm. of like any of those athletes. So I was like weighing my options i'm pretty sure my dad bought shirts to the other teams already that like i was supposed, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. like he was just like yeah let's go yeah, like yeah. all the championship teams he was like so stoked yeah, yeah. like why wouldn't you say yes they're like the best team to uh-huh. ever exist yeah in softball i'm like i'm going to cal and then everyone's like what <laughs> <laughs> like even the other schools were just like confused yeah. like what you're gonna turn down our full ride offer to go to the one of the lower teams in the division and for me, I mean, world class education playing in that's such a mature decision. I was gonna say that yeah. for I you would... to think of like what's next, you know? Yeah, it you're was, not thinking yeah. about the now. Like you, you did the um, the sports. Yeah, and now you're like, okay, what's next? The education side. Too. Yeah, that was a lucky roll of the dice because mm-hmm. now looking back, I'm so thankful that was the decision I made instead mm-hmm. of going the route of like, yeah, yeah, I want an NCAA championship, yeah, 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 yeah. like. What now? Now what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So right. that was actually one of the things that I experienced is I went to one of those championship schools and we were walking around and I was at the softball field, gorgeous, mm-hmm. wine and dine, oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And then I walked into a room and there were some girls sitting in there, ladies, like older ladies. And I was like, hey, like, who are you guys? Like, why are you guys here? And they were like, oh, we were on the whatever championship team oh. of like 19... Yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. or like early 2000s uh-huh. or something and it hit me where i was like what are you doing here you know yeah, like, like that was the best that was like the highlight of their everything lives or yes. whatever what were they doing there they were just hanging out like having oh, a good time nice. they were just like <laughs> that's never left <laughs> yeah no basically and i mean yeah. no no knocks to them because yeah. that if that's your dream then that's your dream but mm-hmm. for me it yeah, hit me in that moment yeah. where 
if nobody is going to remember who the ni- 1975 NCAA championship champion yeah, team yeah. was, yeah. who the player of the year was, yeah. Yeah. nobody's going to care who the 2019 was, 2020, mm-hmm. 2021, whatever mm-hmm. year I graduate, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, that just didn't seem super appealing to me personally yeah. in my yeah. story. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that's where I made the decision where I was like, I would rather face the best players in the world Mm-hmm. and play against them and if i do good enough i'm gonna get recognized and noticed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then also get a degree that's worth you know priceless mm-hmm. yeah and oh, that's something such, out of my ballpark for sure yeah that's such a good like conscious like mature decision like totally for you to go that, through all the hard like the awkward conversations and then the, the yeah. searching and like just to end up on that like that's yeah. that's huge and not get like wrapped up in not the hype of it all because in that time of your life that's like your whole world was like college softball that was right? pretty much my only goal in life like yeah. i actually don't think i thought once what happens after you graduate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. my goal was to go to college and go for free yeah. and be one of the best softball players uh-huh. and gosh i never once thought what happens what after happens that yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and a lot of people that, don't I you know yeah say, i'm sure lots of athletes kids who grow up as like athletes who that's like drilled into their heads like Mm -hmm. scholarship college ball like that's and then yeah that's their whole entire world yeah and then what what did what did (laughs) you end up going to school for so i ended up doing business and when i was at fresno state and then i went to uc berkeley and i did sociology with an emphasis in business and marketing nice Nice. at that time what were you were you starting to think about like life after softball Um, I'd say, yeah, I was, I started, I definitely didn't think that I wanted to go play pro or anything, Mm -hmm. but opportunities presented itself for me to play on the Puerto Rican national team. And that's kind of what opened up my eyes to the world because Mm -hmm. my decision to go to Cal was also because I didn't want to leave the West coast Mm because I felt like it was too far from Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then meanwhile, now looking back, like I've traveled the world and back. So it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, like (laughs) good thing I stayed on the West coast for why, you Uh know, like, yeah. Right after that, I ended up playing on the Puerto Rican national team during the summers while I was in college. And I traveled all over the world playing in different international tournaments. Sick. And yeah, it was, it's, I mean, I'm still an active member yep. on the roster. Mm-hmm. So it still is to this day. I think I'm on year six or seven Wow. of just the most incredible experience of my life. And I think that's what really opened me up to understanding that there's more Mm -hmm. And I think that every level of like starting in my hometown and Mm -hmm. then moving to like more of a national view and then moving to that worldwide view of like, wow, there's a lot Mm -hmm. more out here and Mm -hmm. it's a lot more obtainable than you would think. Mm -hmm. That's what kind of kept opening my mind to Mm -hmm. new opportunities. Nice. No, yeah, I was going to say that like just coming from Hawaii, not only Hawaii, but like, you know, Waianae, then going out to the mainland for school and then yeah then reaching an international level that's huge yeah mm-hmm. what was that whole experience or is i guess it wasn't it's it's still present still going. Yeah. yeah but yeah tell us what it was like yeah it was like moving from the smallest dot in the ocean to like this worldwide platform where we're playing in front of these crazy audiences I mean, to break it down, I, I love to give the behind the scenes that people don't yeah, understand. No, yeah. yeah. Kind of like the way that they recruited me in college. The same thing is like when you go to these international tournaments, you just feel like this pride of like just representing something so much bigger than yourself mm-hmm. and just bigger than anything that you could even fathom, basically. Mm-hmm. And then you like show up at these tournaments. You're really scared to get cut from the team because everyone's very good at what yeah. they do. And then... They just fly you everywhere that you need to go. So once you make the roster, 15 players, so it's a super small roster, Mm -hmm. they'll fly you. So one of my favorite times is um, Colombia, where we won our gold medal. So we did for Barranquilla in 2018, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Um, We stayed at the Olympic Village there. And it's just such an interesting experience because that was my first time actually staying in one of those villages and Mm -hmm. experiencing that and you have all these different countries Mm -hmm. from around the world staying and and they live and breathe sports or whatever they do right yeah so so everyone's just like the best of the best yeah yeah Yeah, and it's crazy because like a lot of them were from this like south america Mm -hmm. those Mm -hmm. countries so 
all of them are speaking like Spanish or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're trying to like, we were in Colombia, so we're, they're trying to communicate with you and you can't like talk back because yeah. I don't know Spanish, uh-huh, even uh-huh. though I'm on the national team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're just like, oh, hola, como estas? Yeah, yeah, and no. you're just like trying to hang, but you don't really know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of fake it till you make it. Un poco, un poco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no hablo, no. So you're like trying to like just fake it till you make it. And there's just all these amazing athletes and you're just hanging out with your team and there's the opening ceremony, opening and closing ceremonies, which are always my favorite. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Where my first experience, I didn't know what to expect. We were riding buses and like the whole way there, everywhere we go, the city like shuts down. Sick. So you're driving and like you get your police escort and you just see like the whole road, like the sides of the streets are like people waving. Like wow. Yeah. Kids and fans. Oh my gosh. And just, oh, that's like so a sick. whole Crazy. country worth of people are just like out waving at the buses going by and you're just you're like, like oh, is this yeah, my yeah, yeah. life right now? Like what are you, what's even going on? <laughs> no, you're just like, I was so just, ne- it was never a dream growing up. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what's just happening again? Like yeah, constantly yeah, yeah. like been in a state of shock for the last <laughs> 10 years, I think. Like, <laughs> so shocked yeah Yeah, yeah. like am i still just completely shocked walking around (laughs) so like you're just on these buses and they're like waving at you and then you get to this huge arena and it's decked out in like whatever the colors and like whatever for the games are and there's like a huge crowd like there's just crowds going for like miles Uh and everyone's trying to get in and i heard that shakira was performing there and she's from colombia oh right right so i was like Oh, I understand. I was like, this makes sense. We're here for a Shakira concert. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just treating us yeah. to a Shakira uh-huh. concert because, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, we're yeah. here. So I was like, oh, that makes sense why everyone's, like, so crazy about this. So we yeah. get out. We're all dressed in our, like, cute little matching outfits yeah, yeah. for your country. And then we're walking in. And then I realized that, like, sh- we're not here for a Shakira yeah. concert. That you guys it's are like the main you attraction. Guys, yeah. <laughs> Shakira was here for us. Yeah. <laughs> And I just like my mind was blown in that moment because I spent the whole day thinking we were attending a Shakira uh-huh. concert. <laughs> and you don't understand anything that's happening either, no, right? Like, <laughs> not at all. You just kind of follow the leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's so we, adorable, though. Yeah, we get in there and like Puerto Rico is always like just so extra and just one of the countries that is doing the absolute most always. <laughs> yeah, so, the best. So we're over there chanting, Yo so boricua, pa que tu lo sepa. <laughs> and there's like hundreds of us oh, in yeah. like all of our different sports, men's and women's. And we have all of our flags and we're just yeah. like, Yo so boricua. Uh, yeah. And we're like walking through this tunnel and you just see like a huge football stadium like i think there was like 60 to 70 thousand people Crazy. there holy that must have been yeah. such an experience so loud Yo, so and uh-huh. you just hear like the crowd roaring yeah yeah and then like they say puerto rico and uh. then they announce it and you walk out of the tunnel and then it's just like lights in your face and you just see Dang. everyone like losing their absolute minds uh-huh. like just cheering and like all the different country flags are up and everyone's cheering wow and you're just walking around and you're waving at the crowd and yeah, people yeah. are just going insane that must have been such an insane experience core memory for yeah. sure. Um, one of Holy. the craziest core memories i have to date and it's just you you sit down they go through the whole ceremony you're feeling like all these weird feelings of like thankful scared yeah nervous mm-hmm. happy mm-hmm. confused like where am i <laughs> and what's happening <laughs> and you see the olympic rings go up and it's on the flag and it's just like what dang <laughs> like how <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's crazy because it's like for you like you you didn't like dream or think of that you know it's just yeah. like yeah, it was lots, just ha- of yeah who, lots of people like lots of people who end up there like that was their thing that they were focused on like how you were focused on like scholarship yeah like, um, uh-huh. you know but then people will be them, like national team national team, national like, team yeah. Yeah. yeah so it was just like like we had uh himano reynolds on for the yeah. skateboarding team and he was like even at a young age, I want to be on the Olympic team. Even before it was a thing. Even before so it was, it was like, Olympic sport. So yeah. I was like listening to you here. I was like, dude, you're experiencing this crazy experience that you're like, like not how did everyone, I get here? Yeah, how did I, what, am I, what is this? You <laughs> no, know? Yeah. it's like truly just like hard work, following my true passion yep. and like love for the game that just led me somehow to 
the like seeing the flag raised and then they have the torch and then mm -hmm. they light the thing to start the official games and um then this thing is what happens kind of like off camera is they tell all the athletes that they can like run down when the performances are going. Oh, sick. So like mm. when you're watching it on TV, you'll see the athletes walking and you'll see the yep. whole thing. And then it'll just zoom straight to the performance. Yep. Mm -hmm. What you don't realize is like, you know how like Super Bowl and stuff, yeah, you see rush. like the people that are like yeah, down yeah. there somehow. Mm -hmm. I was like, that was my first experience getting to like rush the... You just rush the, the... So yeah, well, I don't know if this is how it goes every time. Sometimes it's a little different. Uh -huh. And sometimes people walk, but like for some reason the vibes were so high in Colombia that oh, yeah. they like unhooked like the leash to, yeah. to block like all of the athletes. And you just have like all these like Olympians <laughs> and like world class <laughs> athletes just like sprinting, sprinting <laughs> from one side of the thing all the way to like the Shakira concert that <laughs> now I am finally getting to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, I was here for that. Yeah. I was like, wow. Yeah. So like everybody's like sprinting on down. And it's just like a free for all. Like there was a hole in between like where the the stands were and mm -hmm. like how to get to the other things. So like people are like falling in the hole oh and like it's just like absolute chaos yeah. outbreak. And yeah. we're all sprinting and like when I was were running. Were you sprinting too? Oh, were you like oh, with the crowd too? Yeah, yeah. You kind of no. have to, I think. No, know? yeah. Like you're going to get totally <laughs> trampled by like these like awesome athletes. <laughs> and you're just running and like I can just remember my phone died, so I don't have, like, any oh, video dang. of this. <laughs> but it's just, like, my... I just remember it was, like, Carnival was, like, kind of, like, the theme mm -hmm. of it. So there was, like, these huge people on stilts uh -huh. and, like, flashing lights and flat fireworks blowing yeah, up. And I just remember, like, running in this crowd <laughs> yeah, of, like, yeah. Olympians, like... <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, Carnival, yeah, like, yeah. people were dancing. And I was just, like... Shakira is like the only thing I <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah. It was like, like, I couldn't. I can, what a moment. I can't oh my God. tell if this was a dream or if this was real life yeah, yeah. at this point. Like, it just so crazy. And then you get up there and she's from Colombia. So I've never seen people like flail around. Like I've seen the crowd in Colombia that day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like truly that been so surreal. losing mm -hmm. their mind. Yeah. And it just ended with like fireworks and stuff. So it's just crazy that those kind of core memories were mm -hmm. made through sport mm -hmm. and just it's it's just funny to just have seen so much of the behind the scenes of things that i would have never thought mm -hmm. that i would even know what it's like to only see shakira while like racing like usain bolts <laughs> yeah, of the world yeah, you yeah, know yeah. <laughs> like, and it's, to like, get it's, her. it's such a cool story because it's like it, it's so inspiring to so many especially in hawaii you know it's like so that, relatable that, that things, to, that like, things like that are possible and it's out there mm -hmm. wherever you're from, you know? Yeah. So that's cool. No, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that that's why it's been, it's been cool in yeah. sport and just, you know, and then like transferring over, making the transition into the USA pros yeah. where mm -hmm. those are broadcasted on TV. Um, it's just been truly, you can, you can assume that in every stage of my life from here all the way on to wherever I end up, it's just like the same constant like in all because yeah. i really just didn't set my my dreams for any anything mm -hmm. that's happening right now mm -hmm. so it's really just like always thankful always a little nervous always a little confused <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but like <laughs> nevertheless having yeah, yeah. a lot of fun yeah, and soaking it all in. making sure that i take whoever wants to come with me because at every level it's just <laughs> yeah we want to we want to see there can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's where it's been just like so funny and i feel like it's been something that i've tried to tell people my like i've tried mm -hmm. to tell my story and also tell people like outside of sport i mean there's the gonna be those moments for everyone and no matter mm -hmm. what your field is media business mm -hmm. um fashion there's always gonna be like that next level that you didn't even think was possible mm -hmm. if you look outside of you know your hometown you look bigger than national and mm -hmm. like go to the world you know mm -hmm. you never know where you could end up so mm -hmm. there's always something bigger and it's always just i think that it's good advice yeah, yeah like if you if you follow your dreams and you just take take these big risks like at every time i've i've like i said like it's the same feeling as leaving college where mm -hmm. you're very scared crying a little yeah. mm -hmm. um you don't really know what the next best move is but mm -hmm. you can trust your gut on 
um, just taking a, a risk that maybe not people, not many people agree with, mm -hmm. then I think that eventually you'll figure out like, Hey, I like this or I don't, I didn't really like that and kind of make adjustments along the way. And mm -hmm. eventually you'll end up running after Shakira. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's inevitable. That's crazy. That's so, cool. so crazy. Oh, I love that story. Do you have a memorable game or like any like memorable moments in your softball career? Oh man. And I mean, I'm, too that, many. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's the first one that comes to mind? I think there's, there's two that always come to mind. Both of them, my mom was present, mm -hmm. which is interesting because my parents and family never got to see any of my games at Fresno. Oh. Aside any? from on TV. Oh, yeah. oh okay, yeah. yeah. So any, anything that was in person, they didn't get to go until a, a regional one time. And then it wasn't until I came home in Hawaii to play with Cal, mm -hmm. where I got to play actually on yeah, home yeah, field, yeah. like my home field for the first time. Sick. And the first time since States, my senior year in, wow. at Kamehameha. And it was, it was a surreal experience because I ended up throwing my first uh, perfect game ever. Oh. Wow. In front of my yeah. whole family. Back oh, home. Yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. For your homecoming yeah. game. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. So first perfect game and perfect wow. games for softball and baseball are mm -hmm. making it through the entire game without a single person reaching base yep. mm -hmm. and it's really hard to do because you can have a no hitter which mm -hmm. means no one's gotten a hit off of you all game mm -hmm. but a perfect game means that you didn't walk anyone it means that your defense didn't make any errors there was no like it was perfect yeah, yeah. It was, no, yeah. One, no one got to first base nobody got to first yeah. base at all so That's it's, it's hard yeah. to do because uh -huh. it's kind of out of your hands yep. you know yeah yeah Dang, and all your family and friends were there. Yeah. That must have been Dang. crazy. Yeah. yeah, no, my homecoming was insane. Yeah. Like, there are yeah. so many people. It was funny. Like, they were cheering for UH, and then, um, like, when I when it was my turn to call my name, it was, like, an equally louder, yeah, yeah, or yeah. if not louder, cheer. It was uh -huh. just like, what's up, guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's the thing about Hawaii, you know? Yeah. They're always going to support. Like, yeah, they show Whoever out. you're playing for, but, yeah, if you're from Hawaii, They'll they got rally. your back. Yeah. yeah. Every single time. Have you seen any like consistencies or like similarities when it comes to like athletes on that level, like Olympic level? Like, have you seen any like um, routines or behaviors or like something that like you can see, say like, oh, that's what put them there? Mm. Or something that you did or yeah. do? Yeah. I'd say there's a hundred percent a similarity. And I think it comes to being absolutely relentless. Mm. So I think that regardless of if you're an athlete, if you're whatever field you're in, it's being like extremely relentless and having the courage to go for your dreams and to just go for it. Mm -hmm. It's going to feel uncomfy. You're not going to feel ready mm -hmm. ever. But if you don't go for it, you'll never know mm -hmm. if you could have mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. So there's like some stories that I like to tell. I'll tell the bullet point version because a lot of people have heard it already where I was supposed to try out for a national team when I was uh, in high school. So mm -hmm. a junior national team, baby national team. Baby, baby national. nationals. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I really was not confident in myself. I didn't think I was good enough. My mm -hmm. mom told me to go and I was kicking and screaming. I was like, I am not going. Yeah, right. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to go out there and embarrass myself, waste money. Like, that sucks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't end up going. I got my way, surprisingly. And... <laughs> Years later, I ended up meeting up with one of the coaches and they were like, hey, like, by the way, why did you never come to the national team tryout that one time? And I was just like, oh, like national team tryout. It was so long ago. I forgot about it already. Uh -huh. And they were like, yeah, like you. Did you know that you had a spot on the team? We just wanted you to come and try out. Oh, Dang. stop. Oh, that just gave me chicken yeah, skin yeah, again. Yeah. yeah. No way. Yeah. So it was one of those moments where it was totally crazy for me to like realize that most times we may actually have a spot on the team yeah. but if we never go you never then know you never know yeah it's, that's that's wow. life that's crazy yeah mm -hmm. so wow. from that from that moment on it pretty much scarred me yeah to in a, in a good was, way in a good way and it was yeah. crazy because like we talked about this in another episode too where it's like it's not it wasn't someone else telling you that you couldn't do it you yeah. you told your you said that to yourself yeah, yeah so it was like your own limiting belief yes and, so that's where from that moment on, I, I totally decided that 
especially if someone invites me mm-hmm. like no one's gonna invite you to something they don't think you're ready for exactly yeah so yeah. like that's right. that's one telling sign yep. mm-hmm. so for whoever's listening yeah if they invite you yeah if someone's <laughs> inviting you to something they yeah. wouldn't have contacted you if that opportunity wasn't for you mm-hmm. right there's an open door right there you just mm-hmm. need to you need to just go yeah. yeah and then like the second thing is if you feel like you're not ready like who's to say that you know like let let everyone else decide or like give yourself the opportunity mm-hmm. and like see. Take the chance. Yeah, take the chance because that's what I've learned is I would rather take the chance and know what would happen instead of not take the chance and always wonder what would have happened. Yeah. And then you found out and it hurts. Yeah. 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 When you're talking about like athletes, like Olympic athletes or athletes at their like the elite elite, like the point zero 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 percent of their sport. It's like, do you think it is that like a mindset? Yeah, I think it's a it's a mindset of being completely relentless, being able to take risks. Mm-hmm. And then I think also just having this like positive outlook. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think having like short term memory, like one thing that I do always think about, which has helped me beyond sport now a lot more than in sport, but has been something that I've always thought about and kind of lived on is the blue feather theory. Have you guys ever heard of that one? Mm-mm. Tell us what that is. Yeah, so the blue feather theory is, um, it's this thing where there's a story where a bunch of people got together and they all came into a room and the person was like, hey, I bet in the next week I can make you see a blue feather. Mm. And everyone in the room is like, "What? why would I see a blue feather? Like, I haven't seen a blue feather in years. There isn't even blue birds around here. So they're like, whatever. Like, yeah, right. And the person's like, okay, go out and go into the world and I'll come back in a week and we'll talk about it. So each person goes out. And when they're on their stroll or like sitting in a coffee shop or like looking through a book, like each person came back and ended up saying that they saw a blue feather, whether it was like, like on their day to day Mm -hmm. walk or whatever Mm -hmm. it was, Mm -hmm. each person came back to the meeting and was like, Hey, we saw a blue feather. Like, did you plant that or what Uh was it? And the person was like, it's not that the, that I planted the blue feather. It's just mm-hmm. that you were looking for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like subconsciously. Subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's like when someone says like they bring up a car or something and then, yes. you, and then you see like 10 of those cars. Totally. So it's like, yeah. like, yeah, yeah. If you, that's the exact example mm-hmm. that I like to use is tell me not like your whole life. Every time your parents have gotten a new car or something or you have. Yeah. Then you see everyone else. You're with like, it. Since when did everyone drive a white exactly. forerunner? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> pretty sure that actually does that, exist in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. That, that's a bad example <laughs> because Toyota, obviously, is number one in Hawaii. But, like, it could be, like, yeah. my grandma's, like, fia, yeah, like, yeah. Like, and, like, fiesta. Yeah, like, but, like, you see everyone with it once you get neon it. Neon right? green yeah. fiesta. I'm like, why? Yeah. When did we all start yeah. driving this car? Uh-huh. And it's, That's so true, though. So how do, yeah. how, do you, how do you use that in life? Yeah, so the way that I use it is I I just everything that goes through my mind is I believe to like focus on the positive and focus on being extremely specific on my goals. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there's sometimes where I don't know what the next goal is that I mm-hmm. am searching for, but mm-hmm. I do know that if I align my mindset with what I want, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm then it'll it'll lead me in the right direction so i may not know what the giant blue feather at the end of the road is yeah. but i know that if i follow the little blue feathers along the way it'll eventually lead me in the right direction so love that's, that. that, yeah, that that's really good. Yeah. so good it's like whatever and you put out in the universe there it's the universe is going to return so yeah so. i love that advice too because i think a lot of people don't like you know it's like oh follow your passion like go after your dream job and people are like what is it though yeah. but then if you're like just taking the little crumbs like oh this is making me feel good or this is making me feel value or whatever that's just like follow that just follow that Mm -hmm. just keep doing that yeah Yeah, Yeah. it'll lead you to your blue feather yeah that's that's why i I, i've literally like lived my life according to that theory that i heard once upon a time and now like now that i'm starting to come out of sport so Mm -hmm. I've set it up where I was traveling year round for sport Mm -hmm. and it was kind of taking a toll on me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's really fun when you're outside of it and you're like, oh, you get to travel the world and play. And people don't get to see like what actually happens behind the scenes. Yeah. And it's just hard. It's like, okay, I work out so many times per day. My Mm -hmm. body is hurting. Mm -hmm. Like my shoulder is injured. My neck is injured. My back is injured. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing PT and all of this hard work and I'm living out of my suitcase Mm -hmm. and I don't really have anywhere 
to call my my mm-hmm. home like i don't have roots and mm-hmm. even though like i can come home and i have a home mm-hmm. here yeah it just i'm barely there yeah. so it just mm-hmm. it just feels like like what it is i'm traveling the world and like so is my life it's mm-hmm. just everywhere what's, yeah. ne- so, what's next what's next yeah it's always like a new team yeah. new tournament yeah. new something mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. although it's very awesome and fun it's it can get tiring mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i've set it up now that after covid i've been home for about maybe like a year and a half to two years now yeah nice. um and i've set it up where majority of the year i'm home Mm-hmm. And luckily, my teams love me enough that mm-hmm. if there's a big tournament, like a medal on the line or something, they'll invite me to come up, and I can. They'll just trust that I'm not bad at the <laughs> sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, That's cool because it's like you're you still have the opportunities to play, but then you're mm-hmm. not like yeah. I guess like there's no pressure for you to play all the time. No mm-hmm. pressure, and I mean I yeah. according like to my book, it's the same as before, where it's like I feel like I've kind of checked the boxes of reaching yeah. some mm-hmm. of the highest levels in sport, mm-hmm. and I mean if I keep going, it's just like to achieve like LeBron James status <laughs> at this point, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like I've really just f- checked all the boxes of what I would want to achieve in my sport. Yeah. So I think now being able to achieve all of that. Um, on my own terms of like maybe I do want to play this summer or maybe not then yeah. then it, it's been amazing and then now I've been able to come home and now I'm moving into so many more things um, at the like business and yeah, entertainment what's, what's, what's yeah, next for you talk about Tell, some of yeah. those things that are like you're yeah. you're excited about yeah I'm so stoked to. so I mean now that I'm back home a big thing that I have been doing is um, one helping the next generation of athletes That's so it. Yeah. One of those things where people are like, help yourself first. And mm-hmm. I'm like, everyone can be helped along the way. Like I have mm-hmm. a little bit of time. Yeah. So yeah. it's been cool. I've been doing some coaching and helping kids. A lot of them have been getting recruited. They just had the state tournament recently. So and almost every single pitcher on every team was one of my athletes. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What a feeling. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, because yeah. it's not like your your own now. It's like the next generation yeah it's so cool and it's just so cool to see like my players like just dominating all of the rankings for everything and it's cool to just see them actually getting better because you know you'd like see them every day and like i don't really know if i'm helping or not i'm like are you getting better (laughs) and then their parents will come back and just be like oh my gosh like everyone's wondering what they've been doing i'll get like crazy messages like Mm -hmm. the whole park is like what has she been up to oh that's awesome yeah and then i'll have parents like oh my daughter just got an offer to college thank you so much and it's just been crazy and that's one part of it but i think that according to my story i would love to try and help athletes do what i did and kind of diversify Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so my goal is to like help athletes i'll start off with softball kind of like prove the idea Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. maybe go to all women's sports and then when it's time i'd love to take over the men's sports too and kind of just give everyone yeah you know like support to use sport as a vessel to a better life overall That's sick. That's so awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now you're yeah. thinking next generation and that's amazing, you know? Yeah. Coming back and home. bigger, like yeah. just how to help the most people. Like you're like softball, then all the women's sports and then the men's sports. Yeah. That's Yeah, so cool. I think that would be really cool because I know I know that like a lot of parents can go into a big debt now. So like, you know how I kind mm-hmm. of paved the way. Mm-hmm. All of that was free for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People are doing that not for free now. Yep. So mm-hmm. it's it's definitely hard and it puts a lot of stress on families and the parents' relationships. And I'm just like going way deeper than just the athletes. So yeah. if I could have the athletes come out and get their training and kind of like trap them there and be yeah, like yeah <laughs> well now trap you're them. here yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like maybe if i could somehow help help them like provide these services for a cheaper price or something you mm-hmm. know just provide them with opportunities so yeah, they can like get better yeah sick. it's like hopefully it bleeds into their families and it'll like we won't be able to track it but hopefully that just bleeds into overall happiness mm-hmm. of like community yeah. and you know over time nice that's awesome love we're that. excited for that yeah I mean, it's I love- crazy because you're just getting started 
you're just getting started and yeah you're gonna it's see it's a whole new chapter yeah. for you and it's exciting with all the experience and like life experience experience in sport that you've accumulated over your lifetime it's like to be able to like help the next it's like pretty beautiful to see mm-hmm. yeah it's been yeah. cool and i mean i've been doing a lot with um like the entertainment space of it as well because i mean sports brought so much to me where yep. I just like it just blew up in different ways as well. Mm-hmm. So now I'm doing like ESPN broadcasting yeah. I saw that. That's yeah. and just these huge like national events. I was invited to the Grammys representing yeah, Keys and Mora, so sick. So yeah. cool. like his outfits and was there with Tanya Joaquin and just like family. And it was really, really cool to just see Bruno Mars was there and he mm-hmm. won like a Grammy yeah, that yeah. night. So and cool. Now, like, just having all of these experiences of just that modeling randomly. Yeah. So yeah, I think that it's been cool because I've posted up a lot of the entertainment things on my social mm-hmm. media. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of people will see, like, the fun entertainment side of things now. Yeah. But, oh, man, those are kind of the, like, least of my worries, <laughs> to be completely honest. Like, yeah. Like, I'll post the modeling picture that I did, and it'll just be, like, all day I was, like, working, <laughs> just working yeah, hard, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, and I think, I mean, it's so cool that all these things are kind of being, like, gra- it's, like, gravitating towards you. But I think, um, like, the just talking with you now, it's, like, the, the person that you were, like, growing up in Waianae, it's, like, you're still the same. And I think people really, like, appreciate that, like, authenticity and that just good heart that you have like you been to the you know top of the top but then you're still like the same girl yeah I think a lot of people can relate to the story too of just you know it's um, I think everyone can see that I'm genuinely in awe at every situation (laughs) that's brought my way so everyone's like (laughs) kind of would have the same reaction if they were put in this situation totally yeah and I think that it's been like a lot of hard work over the years that it's finally starting to catch up and pay off in huge ways yeah. And yeah, it's just been cool. My sports experience and then education and then now moving into this business space and mm-hmm. giving back. So cool. So cool. So where can people find you and like get coached Sign by you? Sign up for training. Sign up for training. <laughs> yeah. 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 So if you guys want to um, find me, you can find me on at Kama Training for anything softball related. Mm hmm. Uh, on Instagram and then on Instagram for anything just overall related mm-hmm. at comma k m a dot u n g comma dung and yeah it's that's pretty much where you can find me for any of those related things. Mm-hmm. Nice. Thank you so much for sharing your story. That yeah. was that was such so a great like. I feel like we could talk for like so much longer. There's I know. like we there were like so many things that you kind of touched upon we're like we can talk about that but i was yeah. like oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, we can no. talk forever so we gotta we can, we'll have you back again yeah. we can do another one yeah. i yeah. will do one surprise though for you guys yeah right okay we like yeah. surprises okay we have uh here we go let's see if i have it in here i do okay little surprises uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> we got some noms we manifested this we did manifest <laughs> it <laughs> blue, blue, blue feather <laughs> Asking you shall receive. Oh my gosh. Yes, Shiraz is my oh, favorite one cheese. too. Oh, oh perfect. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, thank you for this. Actually, kind of a little surprise announcement is that I am um, one of the the people who are on the crazy team of noms, running noms. Nice. So. Are you really? Yes. Oh my gosh. So I that's... am the COO of noms. Oh, sick. Mm-hmm. Holy, nice. I had no idea. You know Nobody that my does. pantry is like full of these things. No way. Yes. We'll get you more. This is nice. all like in my car, in my purse. I'm just like have this on me all the time. Yeah, so this is the, this is kind of surprise. like yeah. a surprise announcement. And nobody really knows because I like to put, like I said, entertainment side of things uh-huh. up. Mm-hmm. But I mean... There's a whole crazy story on how I ended up at Noms, but we can talk about that another <laughs> That's a whole time. Other, but Dang, thank what you. don't you do, yeah. girl? <laughs> keep up with you. Uh, follow Kama, follow Uncut. Follow Noms. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a guilty pleasure right here. Oh my yes. gosh, this is what we're doing right after this. All right, thanks for following, listening, watching, subscribe, like. Do, do all, all the, the things. things. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everyone. Aloha. Thank you. Bye.